Hi, this is Randall Whiteman. Today I'll be running through a brief overview of the sales order entry application in Epicor ERP version 10 using the standard demonstration environment. If you would like me to show you more detail on any aspect of this demo, feel free to leave a comment. Okay, let's get started. So I've logged into Epicor into the home screen and I'm going to use the favorites that I've set up to open up order entry. So I'll just show you some of the tabs, some of the sheets in the Epicor sales order entry application. I'll input the minimum fields and I'll briefly explain some of the other key fields. So first of all we create a new sales order with a new button and I'm going to use the word, use the customer Dalton and tab out. We could search using the customer search button here and I'm going to put a need by date of Friday. Okay, so those are the two pieces of information that are needed for a sales order header, the customer and the need by. There are some other fields just to mention here. And so there's the custom purchase order reference. That's a free form text field, so you can put any reference information in there. The ship by uh, date, that's when the customer, when we need to ship it out of our warehouse to satisfy the need buy, that will default to the same as the need buy but you can change it. The auto invoice flag, if this one is ticked and we would want to default it to ticked, then when the sales order is shipped then the uh, accounts receivable invoice will automatically be created. So then we have terms, the payment terms and settlement discount terms and they default from the customer. We also have the ability to have a different bill to if there's a parent than the sold to. In this case we're having the same as the sold to. The ship to information, again we can have a different ship to. So we have the sold to being West River Lane and the ship to being South Green Bay Road. Now we also have the ability to choose if the customer allows it, if, it's, if it is enabled on the customer to have a one time ship to. So this one when it's ticked, now we come over to the one time ship to and any information we put onto the one time ship to here this will apply to this particular order only so we'll untick that one. The counter sale functionality I won't enable this now I might do a separate video on that one and this allows you to uh, complete an entire order all at once including the packing slips and the uh, customer invoice. And then you have the summary information so the uh, item level, the line level charges, any discounts that have been applied and then miscellaneous charges at the, uh, the header level and any tax that is applied to arrive at the order total. Okay so let's now go and have a look at the header. Now the summary here is uh, holds the header information and it also holds the lines as well. But I won't go through the line level detail here on the summary screen. We'll move down through the header. So as we see here, the header information is largely the same as on the summary screen, just with a little bit more information. I won't go through any of the more any more of those details at this time. Again, if you'd like to know more details about any of these fields, leave a comment or log a request at epicordemo.com. Now we'll show here the that's the the header detail screen and a couple of interesting or not, notable is the order miscellaneous charge. So here we can create a record such as a freight charge that applies to the entire order and you can set up a charge code with a, a dollar amount attached to the to the charge code and you can apply the order level miscellaneous charge at this at this level. Uh, there's other tabs as well that I won't go through. Comments here, you can add comments 
at the header level that apply to the entire sales order or to the picking list or to packing, invoicing or pro forma invoice so that you can then print out those comments uh, on those different documents. Now we'll move to the line levels and on the line detail tab so we'll create a new line now because we are at the line detail we could have chosen to drop down and choose a new line but because the line detail is active we can just hit the new button okay and we're going to use a, a part that I've found previously DCD 200 ml ML and tab out of there and so we can see what we've got on hand and we have available stock. Now we're going to order, come down to here, we're going to order five of these and as we said we can see that we have on hand and available. We can also see that the unit price is $190 and we can see which price list attached to the customer the price comes from. We can also see that there is a, a discount here of $19 and so that's the, the discount of 2%. And if we did have a specific discount price list we could override either the price list or the discount price list and choose a different price list or discount price list just for this order. Okay, so on the other side here, we then have the extended price of 950, less than discount of $19 to move us through to the total price of 931. And we would have miscellaneous charge here, and we have a tax line. Okay, so we can go ahead and save that. And if we chose to, we could add more lines. I'll just stay with the one line at this point. And we can use the list view to enter lines. So here we could put the information. So we could just put part and quantity next to each other. And we could tab across the lines and use the enter key to move down to a new line. And so we could just enter part, tab to the quantity, enter, and it would move us down to the part again. It allows for efficient line level entry. So again here we have miscellaneous charges at the line level, similar concept to the header level miscellaneous charges, and we also have line level comments, and that's exactly the same concept as the header level. So we'll move along to the releases, and every line by default gets one release, and so you could split this into multiple releases if the goods are being released from the warehouse at different stages and then each release could be independently invoiced. So here we say we've got the line number and the release number and so we have the destination where this particular release is going so this is the same as the, uh, the ship to of the order and we do have the ability for each release also to override that with a one-time ship to. And we also have the ability to choose where the stock is being drawn from. So in this case it's being drawn from the main warehouse. Okay, now the at uh, the releases there is also the list view and over here if we chose to have the one-time ship to then this is where we would enter the detail for one-time ship to and uh, in relate and equivalent the one time ship to is up here for the order level. So this has just been a very quick overview. I'll just recap. The only information we have to have for the order is the customer and the need buy and then over at the line level on the detail tab is the part and the quantity and that's all we need for an order in Epicor sales orders. This was a Whiteman Online presentation. For more great content, subscribe to the Whiteman Online YouTube channel and visit the website. I look forward to seeing you soon at Whiteman Online.